So the conclusion to the back room renovation is going to be refinishing the floor. The floor wasn't even a blip on the radar when I started the job, but after taking down the ceiling as well as the plaster on the wall, um, I had to lift up the return in the corner. And when that room was redone, I was still pretty young. So I, this isn't something I was looking for, but I noticed that you could see that there used to be exposed um, tongue and groove flooring that was still rather thick so sanding it down wouldn't have been an issue. So I did another investigation discovery hole on the other side of the room which I do recommend because just because you see nice flooring in one part of the room does not mean it extends the whole way especially if it's um, the room has been remodeled before and I could see it on the other side of the room as well so then the floor became my least favorite job in the room and you'll see why in the video but um this is pretty much the end of this project. Like I keep saying, I do have some trim work to do. I have to address the molding around the door as well as the threshold. But for the time being, I'm taking an extended break on that room. However, I believe I'm building a couple, uh, potentially a shoe rack and something else for that back room. And um, if I do end up doing that, I'll film an update because at that point, the trim will most likely be done. But um, I just want to say in the intro because when I tore up the floor, the floor was covered with tar paper and black mastic. I've refinished a couple floors before, but I've never experienced a floor with that sort of material on it. So I was watching some YouTube myself to figure out how best to address it. And a lot of the comments were popping up um, screaming about asbestos. Now I know asbestos is a threat and it's not something to be taken lightly, but I just wanted to say in the intro, when I, when I found that out, I did have the floor tested. I'm gonna show the results in the video. Obviously it did not have asbestos, but I wanted to get that out in the intro so you don't have to deal with a lot of redundant comments about asbestos. So this is the return I'm talking about where I originally saw the floor and what's on the floor now is wide plank pine. Um, my dad and my grandpa actually put this down when they did the mushroom board. And that was one of the cheapest ways to cover up the linoleum that you could see in the video at the time. Unfortunately, they applied it with screws and I didn't know this at the time because you can't see it, but the floor is actually really nice old hard maple. So none of the screws, which had also been polyurethaned over, came out easily. I tried a couple things to get them out, but as you could see, this is really nice lumber and I wanted to save it. So what I finally settled on was I got one of these dowel maker bits. Um, I'm not gonna tell you which one. I believe they were the brand General. They're awful, I do not recommend buying them. I bought the cheap ones because I was only using them to do the floor and they ended up smoking after a little bit. But making those plugs around the screws made it so then I could pull up the boards in one piece instead of splitting them. Um, and then using this lumber down the line, I actually think this is going to be turned into a very large bookcase. Um, you could just plug the holes. I believe these were this was a 5 inch inch bit with dowels and the lumber will actually look pretty cool. But you can see it was a process and this was part of the, the nightmare I had to deal with with the floor was tearing up the wood, a job that I thought would take 15 minutes, ended up taking a lot of trial and error in a couple days. So as you could see towards the end, this bit dulled um, substantially. So what I started doing was just making a divot in the wood, and then I could use a hole saw in order to drill the holes, which went through this uh, quite easily. You can't use the whole, there's no center bit in the hole saw, which is why I had to do the divot at first. If you try just using the hole saw, it just, the bit just dances around on you. It's almost impossible. So by putting that little divot in there with, with the, um, the dowel plug uh, filler bit, then I could go through and finish it. And you could see towards the end, I got pretty good at this. These would pop right out. The plugs are left in the floor. I just could snap those off. Even with the with the wood gone, you still couldn't get the screws out. They were all breaking. And then the last piece, you can see now I've, I've said before, this room's a little under 14 feet wide. And some of these planks stretch the entire length of the room. So this is really nice lumber and I wanted to save it. So this is the linoleum that was on the floor. There's two layers of linoleum and then this is the floor. This floor is actually in great shape. It's or you always get comments about people why they cover up that floor but sometimes it's nice because 
This house was built in 1879, I believe, so you just avoid multiple years of people doing weird stuff to the floors. So on one end, you could see part of the corners is pine. Um, you're always going to find surprises when doing these floors, but the majority of the floor is maple. And um, it worked out nicely because, like I've said before, my mom is a collector of things, and you really don't even see much of this floor anymore anyways. So I'm using white vinegar in a steamer in order to remove that black mastic. This takes about a half an hour to heat up. So while I'm removing this, I did it a little piece at a time because it did take a long time to do this. Um, while that's heating up, I was able to tear up the floor. So you can see I'm taking up the original linoleum. This was the, the floor that I'm tearing up now is what was there when, when uh, we moved in. And there was a washer and dryer right behind me. So I knew there was going to be some watermarks on the floor. And there were watermarks on the floor. But like I said, the part where the watermarks are you, is covered by a carpet at this point. So that wasn't really a, a huge issue. So it was easier to take this off in two layers. Like I said, there's two layers of this linoleum. So I'm taking off the first layer. I had one of these uh, big shingle wrecking bars. Uh, my parents actually have it. If you don't have one, you do not need it. A crowbar worked just as well. You can see kind of what's underneath. It was also interesting because there was obviously the marks of a, a big piece of furniture sitting here, and it happened to line up right where I thought there might be an old coal or wood furning stove, which would explain um, the hole in the wall as well as the fact that there was a chimney there and then I could tear up this floor. So when I started in the corner and I'm tearing this up, you're seeing this black stuff on the floor and that is something I'd never experienced before. And then that is when I went to YouTube and found out that it could have asbestos. That's also when I went to YouTube and found out that one of the only ways to take this stuff up is by steaming it off the floor. I was lucky, I already had one of these steamers. I use it to bend wood in my shop. So that wasn't a big issue for myself. I don't believe they're extremely expensive, but, um. Like I said, there's other methods I saw online. Someone was pouring soda um, on towels on top of it. They said it comes right up if you let it sit overnight. That was not going to happen here. So I had the steamer and that's what I used. This is the kit I got off of Amazon. You send them a piece of the floor and they, they tell you what's in it. And like I said, it came back as none detected. Use a couple of spare pillows if you have them. Um, because there's still a lot of, of nails and screws in the floor and you're going to be down there for quite a while getting this stuff up. It's a long process. So I mainly used a paint scraper and a chisel, also paper towels to goop up all of the mess that comes off of it. I'm also wearing a respirator for this. I wore this respirator for most of the job. This is a heavy duty 3M respirator. You know if you have a good respirator, if you can smell what you're doing. I know that sounds kind of rudimentary, but if you can smell what you're doing, it means that the, the fumes that are dangerous are getting through the mask. When I was doing this job, it absolutely stunk. I could only smell it when I finished working for the day and took it off. So I felt pretty safe about doing it because even though there wasn't asbestos, that brown gunk on the floor is very, very old varnish, which was a plus to this job because the steamer also took up most of that, but you don't want to be breathing in that stuff either. But you can see how long this process is. Um, the white vinegar in the steamer was, was a tip on YouTube. I did it once without it, and I, I noticed it was a little easier to get this stuff up with the vinegar in the steamer. And um, I also imagine it helps disinfect any sort of weird things that might be on the floor. So I would steam a little bit, tear up most of the, the tar paper and the varnish and then I would move to another spot and then go back to the original and scrape with a chisel um, the other piece. So it was really a two-part job but I eventually got it all up. There's really no other way I could think of to do it. That steamer worked. You're basically just sitting there moving that and, and scraping stuff off the floor. Like I said the plus side to that was it did take up a lot of the varnish so I was able to avoid renting one of those belt sanders to do the floor. I was able to belt sand it by hand, which isn't ideal, but it saves the rental fee. And I've rented some of those machines before, and they're, because it is a rental, you're using stuff that other people have used before, and sometimes those machines come broken and don't, don't work that well anyways. So I started with 40 grit in the belt sander, and I went over the whole floor and sanded it up to 120. 
Then I clean the floor multiple times before putting down the finish because there's going to be a lot of dust on the floor. You could see in the corner kind of what I was talking about with the watermark. It was not ideal, but like I said, you, you don't even see it. That must have been long-term leakage from, from the washing machine when it was back here. This is what I'm using on the floor. I've used Poly before. I don't dislike it, but I do like this brand a little bit better. It's two coats and you could walk on it after three days. I'm applying it with a pad applicator. Um, after each coat, you're gonna wanna sand, but it's only two, recommended two coats. So I sanded in between the first and the second coat. Now this floor, like I said, is old maple. You can sand this as much as you want. My mom likes things that look rustic. So I left a little bit um, of the detailing in the floor. But if you go rent a commercial machine, you could take this down to bare maple and the floor will look pretty brand new. So this is sanding in between. But like I said, she, she likes things a little bit rustic. And um, for older maple, maple is not one of my most favorite lumbers because it doesn't have a lot of color or figure to it, but this floor turned out, it's one of the, the prettier floors I've refinished. And once again, you could see, I, I um, mop this again after the first sanding. There's that watermark in the corner. So this was the one corner that must have been from the water damage that was needed to repl be replaced. This is now covered by a dog crate. So once again, you won't see it. So I had some oak flooring in my shop and that's why I decided to cover this with, even though it's not maple. Um, the match ended up being pretty good. So I took out all of the damaged parts. This was an access hole when they must have ran that, that return in the basement and the original subfloor is obviously there. This is the maple. The reason I didn't address the water stain is you could see it goes pretty deep through the wood. You can sometimes bleach that sort of stuff out, but then you'll have a bleached spot versus a non-bleached spot in the floor. So we just kept it the way it was. The oak I had was a little too wide. So I'm gonna apologize because at one point my camera falls over, but what I did was I ripped down it to length, rip, ripping down the groove side because that's easier to recreate than the tongue in my opinion. So once it was to width, I could go through and make some curved cuts, which is what I'm doing here, and recreate the, the groove on those boards, and then I could just lay the floor. And then this is where my, my camera fell over, so you don't really get a great view of that. But this is what the patch looks like. The, the coloration difference is just because of the watermark. You could see where it's next to the maple. It's actually not that bad of a patch. But like I said, this is completely covered. And then this is the floor. I'm really bad at taking finished photos of all of my pieces because I'm so happy to have it done. We started putting furniture back in the room, so I kind of have a couple good photos. You could see the spot that's away from that wall looks 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 pretty good. And like I said, you, you'll see at the end of the video, this is just kind of an overview of the room. So it's probably almost a month ago at this point. This is literally all you can see right now. It's about three square feet of that floor and it happens to be the nicest looking section. But that's about it.